Welcome. In this video I'd like to spend 10 or 15 minutes demystifying Linux for you. Now odds are you know someone who runs Linux or at least you've heard of it otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So what is Linux and what does it mean for you? Well Linux is an operating system that is very mature. It's been around since the 90s, early 90s. It is free, it is open source, and it has really no copyright restrictions. It's a general public license, which means all of humanity owns it. You own Linux, I own Linux, we all own Linux. And as a result, Linux is very robust. It runs 70 to 80% of all web servers. Google, Facebook, Wikipedia all run Linux. It runs on, it's Android, so if you have an Android tablet or smartphone, that is a version or what we call a distribution of Linux, which I'll explain in just a moment, distro for short. It runs on routers. If you have any router, it's running a Linux, home-grade router, and a lot of business-grade routers run Linux as well, although some run Unix. More and more DVRs run Linux, Roku runs Linux, printers run Linux, and the list goes Nest, if you're familiar with the Nest, and a lot of smart devices run Linux, so-called smart devices run Linux. Linux literally runs on billions, that is B, with a capital B, billions and billions of devices. There are over 1 billion Android devices alone, and again, that is a version of Linux. It is a heavily modified version of Linux made primarily by Google, but it is, in essence, a version of Linux. So Linux is dominant. It, it runs pretty much all major websites run Linux. And it runs, again, most smart device, so-called smart devices like the Nest, things like that. GoPro runs on Linux. So if you're interacting with these machines, you're literally using Linux. It is all around you. Where Linux is not dominant, the only place it is not dominant is the desktop. And that is rapidly changing. There are now an estimated 100 million plus desktops out there that have Linux. So let's take a look at Linux. You're looking at Linux, at least a version of Linux. Now let me explain this because this is a little bit confusing for Mac and Windows users. And then I'm going to actually show you. We're going to get into all these menus here. I'm going to explain this and show this. This isn't going to be a how-to video on necessarily how to do this, although you're able to look at this video and duplicate it for yourself. So I'm not really going to get concerned about making sure you can follow. This is really more about how you can make Linux work and again demystify Linux. Now Linux is not made by a single group. There are literally 200 or so what you might say versions of Linux, but again that would be called distributions of Linux. However, it's not as crazy and confusing as it sounds. They are families of Linuxes. Think of it as a family tree. At the very bottom, the root if you will, happens to be the Linux Foundation. That is a group that sort of sets the tone for Linux. However, anyone is free to do any, you can do anything with Linux. You, if you want to gain the knowledge, can work on Linux for free and you can distribute Linux. But at the base is of a tree, if we're going to use a tree analogy, is the Linux Foundation. Then you have groups of families. You have one group called Debian, you have one group called Red Hat, another group called SUSE, and a few other groups. I'm not going to get into all of them, it's not important. The one I want to focus on is Debian because that is the, the version, this is a child of Debian. So the Debian group takes what the Linux Foundation does and they add a bunch of works onto it. It's like writing a book. They write the book, the base book. Then a group called Canonical comes along and they take what Debian's done and they write several more chapters. And they change a few characters around if you were thinking as a book. If you think of a tree, the tree's getting taller here. A branch is starting to grow and you have the Ubuntu branch. And then other individuals and people and groups take what Ubuntu's done and then they make their own versions which would be distributions again of Ubuntu. So we have here Ubuntu Mate or Mate as the developer says. This is actually not an English word. They call it Mate. And I know it looks like Mate. If you want to call it Mate by all means call it Mate. So this is my preferred version of Ubuntu. Now, so that is a very confusing concept to a lot of Windows and Mac users because they're used to Windows being controlled by Microsoft only and Mac being controlled by Apple. However, in Linux, you have, again, so in this Ubuntu Mate 
environment. You have Ubuntu Mate as a branch, and then when you go closer to the trunk, you have you you have Ubuntu itself made by a group called Canonical, and then you have Debian, and that's the branch there. And there are literally most Linux desktops seem to be in the Ubuntu family. There's U, there's Linux Mint you may have heard of. There's Ubuntu proper. There is Elementary OS, which is a version based on. Anyway, the list goes on and on. It is estimated somewhere between 40 and 50 million computers right now are running Ubuntu, or Ubuntu. So this is Ubuntu Mate. So let's take a look at this. Enough of the the chattering. Let's get right down to business, shall we? Now I'm going to show you how it can look, and you can change the look and all this. First of all, let's look at the wallpaper. That's number one. This is something very used. If you're used to on Windows or Mac, I want to change this wallpaper. This is very close to what you're going to see when you install. If you were to load a Ubuntu Mate machine and not do anything to it. Just you, you just come right into the what's called the desktop. You're gonna see this wallpaper. And you're probably gonna go like a lot of people, I don't like that. So you just simply right click, you go change desktop, background, and there you are, you're in the desktop tab and you're able to change this. We'll go ahead just here as illustration. We'll say change this to well, it doesn't matter. We'll change this to maybe a lighter background. You can see here it changes. Well we don't like that. Let's go to something like this. But the bottom line is you're able to change it. And yes, you're able to add this. And if I click on add, then I could search through my computer and go find a picture I prefer. Maybe you have pictures of your pet or you like pictures of a city or your beach trip. You know, you just return from some beach at California or Florida and you want that or mountain, whatever. You can change it as much as you want. So that's how you do that. Very easy. I mean, just like on Windows, right click, go change desktop desktop background boom very simple nothing to that right so let's start up here because the meat is more going to be our applications but let's start up here in the upper right hand corner now this is similar if you're used to windows of the sys tray that is going to be on windows in the lower right hand corner but even on windows you can change where that bar appears most people leave it at the bottom but on windows too you're able to change where you want that up here anyway let's go through this at least if you're on Windows 7 and 10, if you're on Windows 8, you might have the sort of more tiled look or whatever. And so going over here, now this is a virtual machine, just so you know. This is, which means this is not my version of Linux that's running on my computer that I could touch, the bare metal as it's called. This is using Oracle's virtual box and allows you, you could download, it's free. You could then, you can run more than one operating system. You could have dozens of operating systems or two or three operating systems. So this is not my primary desktop. Now I use Ubuntu Mate, but this again is not how mine exactly looks. I have mine set up the way I want it to. Anyway, we have a Bluetooth icon here, a network icon, which this won't really appear this way if you're using it on your computer or to use it on an actual computer overall, you'd get a slightly different look. Then we have a volume control here. And if I click on that, I'm able to change the volume just like in Windows. Just like in Windows, I get a calendar here. I'm able to go through this. Very simple. I can change the year, that type of thing. And then we have a power button. If I click on this, I'm able to suspend, restart, shut down the computer. I'm going to cancel this because we don't want to do that. Now, starting in the lower the lower part of the screen, we have a trash bin here, trash folder. We have, we're able to change workspaces. And what's really cool about workspaces, I'll show those in just a minute, that is something that Microsoft added in Windows 10 is desktops. Linux has had that for over 20 years and Microsoft's like, hey, look at us, we're innovative. And it's like Linux world has been like, yeah, it's been around since like the 90s. So congratulations, Microsoft, for joining the modern era. Then we have the software updater, which very cool about this. And the reason I wanted to show this, and I'm not going to run this, is unlike Windows, this updates everything in one big update. It's going to update Firefox web browser, our office suite, our chat program, the mail program that I'm using, it'll update then Chrome and then the OS itself. So unlike Microsoft, where you do an update on the OS and then, oh, Java needs an update. No, oh, Flash needs an update. And the list goes on and on. It, it's annoying. I mean, as you can see here, the Flash plugin is going to update. So in one update, I'm getting everything on this computer a lot better. Definitely another win on Linux that is more sane and more sensible than having this little updaters popping up in the sys tray because your your mouse driver needs an update. Then it goes pop and appears you update your mouse driver, pop, update Java. Wow, how annoying. So that is not the case with Linux. It is one update will then update everything on your computer. Much nicer. Now I'm going to ignore this. Now you can see here we have two applications running. I have Chrome running right here. And just like on Windows, I can go back and forth on this. 
And on the desktop, see what's very cool is on the desktop, I can keep things decluttered. I can keep Workspace 1, say, for Chrome, and then on Workspace 2, I'm able to start another application and say I could have my mail program running. And then that way, if I have a single monitor, I can switch between them and keep the desktop less crowded instead of trying to open 20 applications on one screen. Or if I have dual or triple or even quad monitors, I can set, say, monitor one's desktop or workspace one, and then monitor two is workspace or desktop two. So that's very in, that's very nice right there. Now, this right here, continuing on, is a button just like on Windows that will show the desktop, and I can just toggle and bring programs on up or down. Now let's get up here to where, well, I'll just minimize these. Now let's get up here to where you would, so, so this you're going to use a lot if you were using Windows, I mean, Windows Linux, just like in the Windows world, as I started to say, switching between programs. So very familiar, very easy way to do it. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. Now if we look at the applications up here, I'm going to click on the applications, and everything is, is left-click except here is a right-click, and then you start a left-click, just like on Windows. But here we have applications, and we have a list of categories. Now right away, if you're a Windows user, you might be going, hmm, this is slightly different. Because in the Windows world, every program wants to create its own. So if you install Microsoft Office, it wants its own folder. If you install Webroot, it wants its own folder. If you install Malwarebytes, it wants its own folder. 7-Zip, its own folder. W Linux does it differently. Linux tries to keep things organized. So everything related to the Internet, like the Firefox browser and the Google Chrome browser, and you can install more browsers, is in the Internet folder. Instead of creating a Firefox folder and a Chrome folder that you have to go to, Linux tries to keep these organized. So everything related to Office goes in an Office folder. Makes a lot more sense, keeps things more compact. Now, yes, if you're saying, well, I don't like that, you can go make a Google Chrome folder. I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's just more work. But yes, it is changeable. Everything in Linux is changeable. Everything is open for more than one way of doing it. The Linux does not have a single way of doing it. So, and then there's these applications. I'm not going to go over them. That's not the point. Places of this video. Places is simply what it sounds like. Where do you want to go? Desktop, which you're already at. The computer, which I'll show in a minute. Networking, you want to search for items. Your home folder. And system, lastly, is a, where you do administration. You can set up printers. Hundreds and hundreds of printers are supported. Scanners are supported. Linux does support joysticks, gaming pads, all kinds of things. It literally supports, it's more open than Windows. You can you have preferences, so you can see here I can set up keyboards, different displays. I can set up the Bluetooth sound, my mouses, that type of stuff. The look and feel, and personal. Then I can do I have backups and preferred programs and all that kind of stuff. Startup programs, things like that you're used to on Windows. And then we have the Welcome Center. Now, this is something that's unique to Ubuntu Mate. When you first install it, you get a welcome screen. And this walks you through the, the Ubuntu Mate version or distribution of Linux. And it's something very, very interesting. You can get new features, getting started. It helps you really walk you through do, doing things like introduction here. And I'm not going to sit here and do all this, but very interesting. And I do, I, I do want to show you the software boutique just real quickly. This is, this is just one way of adding software. This happens to be unique to Ubuntu Mate. This is not the case if you run a different distribution or version or kind, if you will, of Linux. But you can see here, I can click on Categories, say go to the Internet, and I can see different items and software I can install. And if I want to install Chromium, I could just click the Install button, and it would install. As you can see here, if I scroll back up, Flash is already installed, so I, it's just saying Show, or I can remove it. And this is just one way. Ubuntu has literally hundreds or tens of thousands of pieces of software, and there are actually millions of pieces of software available for Linux as a whole. Yes, I did say millions with an M. Okay, so let's say you don't like this look. Let's say that this look is not for you. You do not like this look. Well, let's go ahead and change it up and see a few things. First of all, let's say that you do not like the color scheme here. So if I go here, you don't like this color scheme. If I go here, I'm able to change the color scheme. As you can see here, this color scheme is changing. And so if you don't like this, it's now, instead of that dark background, I could change it to say a blue, and then I get a, I get a blue background. And notice here, this also changed as well. I also want to point out that this close, the maximize, and the minimize button change here. Notice how they're more brick-like. Here we get little circles around them. So you're able to change this. That's, to me, horrible. but 
you're able to change this and there are packs that give you for free that give you a lot of different looks i have a i have a an actual theme pack that'll that literally gives me probably close to a hundred different looks and because there's a look that i want and you get this many starting off and so that's one way that you're able to make it look now before i go further i'm gonna leave this open because i want to show you what the computer looks like so this is the computer and this is linux and this is how it will look and in, in the there's several different file managers so, software in the ubuntu mate world it's called kaja or kaja c-a-j-a and so if i go to help and about you'll see that and this is the file manager which is very easy just like on the windows world i can choose where i want to go i can go straight to pictures or music or my videos folder or i can go to my in this case my username is developer so if your name was rick or john or something you would see john here and so then i'm able to click around and say documents i can click on documents double clicking in my case here and you can see that i have documents just like you would now here's something that's very interesting that you cannot do on windows Let's say that I have, I go to downloads and I want this new document to be in my documents folder. So I don't like that. So as if you see here, it's in the downloads folder, developer downloads. So what I can do is the Windows way of doing it would be to right click and cut this and then go over. Or what's really nice about a lot of Linux file managers, not all of them, is I can do this split screen and then I'm in downloads. And then if I say take this one and I go over to documents, I am able then to drag this over to the documents. Well, if I click and hold, I'm able to drag this and then I can say, yeah, sure, replace that. And now I have moved that file from the downloads into my documents folder or di directory. And how, how easy is that? I mean, I can literally just, I can literally just move files around to my heart's content and that makes it a lot easier than opening up another window. So I keep clicking off that because I'm not holding. Anyway, so that's how that works, and that's pretty, pretty interesting. But let's get to how we can make Linux look a little different. Oh, and by the way, the reason I did that is if you notice here, the icons are green. If I change to, say, let's go to black, the black mate, you'll see here now that they change, they change colors. So it is very themable. Linux is very, very themable. But let's take a quick look and then we'll end this video. So how do we make this look different? Because I personally don't like these three different links up here. So I want something different. So if we go to the look and feel and we go to the Mate Tweak tool, we are able to change this. Now first, let me show you how you can change the desktop. Because if you're on Windows, you may, you may like to have some of these, well, icons on your desktop. Now, if you want the trash to appear as it is, there's your trash can. It'll appear, and as you put things in there, just like on Windows, it will look full. And if I don't want that to appear on the desktop, I can uncheck that. The way it comes by default is that's not checked, but it will show the mounted volumes. And mounted volumes are when you stick like a USB stick in there or a USB DVD drive, and then put something in there. You'll see that appear on your on the on your desktop. If you want the computer to appear, you can have computer. And yes, you can you can drag these and move these and rearrange these as well. But let's go ahead and look at the interface. Now, right now we are looking at, we have a bar up top and a bar at bottom. But let's say you don't like that. Well, actually, before I do that, let me show you the advanced menu. You see here how we have these three separate? If I go ahead and click on enable advanced menu, you will see then it all goes into one single menu. And when I click on that, everything is in one nice menu. We have our applications here. We have our system, which was a system tab. And we have our places tab. And this is what I really like. And this is really, really nice. And yes, this is scrolling. We've got a scroll bar here. That's because this virtual machine is not running as big of a resolution. So it doesn't have as much space. On my actual overall computer that I can touch, the host OS, I don't have this scroll bar here. But this could happen if you end up installing a lot of applications that want to create new folders here. So you can see here the looks changed a little bit. But let's go ahead and change this overall look. So I'm going to go ahead and close Chrome because we don't need Chrome open. So let me go ahead here and close this and let's get rid of Chrome. And then I'll go back there and let's go to this look and change this so we can see how you can make this look very, very different. So let's say you're someone who's used to Windows. So let's go to Redmond. So if I go to Redmond, you can see here we get a very Microsoft Windows look. You can see here the bar up here disappears. We have what's in essence like our system tray. We have our open applications here that I can switch back and forth. And then we have our 
menu bar here, which is not exactly like Windows, of course, but very Windows-like, so that's Windows. If you're someone who's used to Mac, go ahead and click here, you'll get this Mac look where you have the launcher up here and you have this dock down here. And you can see here that this dock then, and yes, you can add and remove items to this dock down here. So that's sort of a Mac-esque look. If you're someone who, who has seen Ubuntu before proper, you can go get something very similar to the Unity look where I have the launchers along the side and I have the menu right here. And if you're using a netbook, you can get a netbook like where it's very compact. There's no menu down here. There's only a menu at the top. And so you can see here that you have different looks. I'm not going to show all of them, but you can see here you can just select your look. Excuse me. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's very simple. Excuse me. Had to take a sip there. <laughs> Been talking so long. Anyway, the final thing I want to show you are icons on the desktop. Because maybe you're someone who, look, I like putting icons on the desktop. Can you do that? Oh, very, very simple. So I'm going to go to the menu here. Go to, say, Chrome. And I right-click and I go, add to desktop. There we go. There's our desktop icon. Or maybe you want some icons up here in, like, the quick launcher. Right-click, go to add to panel. There we go. And you can even do more with this panel. I mean, there's all kinds of things you're able to add to the panel. I'm not going to get into all this, but you can see here that you're able to add a lot to the panel. So that's Ubuntu Mate in a version or distribution of Linux. And it's actually very easy to use. Like any software, you have to get a little bit used to it. But as you can see, if you're used to Mac or Windows, it really isn't that big of a difference. Really, the biggest difference or thing you have to account for is figuring out what programs run. And there are programs like Google Chrome, and things like that that do work on all operating systems, Thunderbird, things like that. You can even, if you're someone who's used to Microsoft Office, Office 365 works in a web browser now. At least the vast majority of the features, and you can actually use that on Linux. So that's a look at Linux, and hopefully, it ran a little longer than I wanted to, but hopefully that demystifies Linux for you.